Jen Logie. Chair, um, I rise to take a short call in part two of the Environment Canterbury Transitional Governance Arrangements Bill um, and would like to speak to two points specifically. Um, one, I think the concept of this undermining and removing our doc democracy rather even more than being an affront to it um, has been quite well canvassed. But I do want to um, talk about that a little bit more. And I'd also like to talk about the concept of subsidiarity which um, in terms of local government in New Zealand, there are two core concepts um, that govern the ruling um, of local government, and that is democracy and subsidiarity, which is the localised decision-making and devolved powers. And that is quite commonly understood as good governance. And this is um, messing with that, to put it bluntly, that um, the minister from... Wellington here, will, with this bill, get to appoint six members representing his or the two ministers appointing their perspectives from being based here, neither of whom are based in Canterbury. And that there is no requirement for at least four of those members to be of that area. Of course, two are, um, will be nominated by um, Te Runanga or Kaitahu, um, and that is a provision that the Green Party actually supported. But this, there is no question that this mill is a compromise on that core principle of subsidiarity, that local decision-making is more likely to produce better results, that people who are embedded in a community and are accountable to that community that they are representing are more likely to produce better governance. And I do want to point out, too, that the in this, in um, part two, that the minister has the discretion to remove appointed members at any time, and that includes the members who have been nominated by Te Runanga or Kaitahu, um, and that they only would be required to consult before they do that. Um, so really, that is a lot of control, and it is also, I would suggest, a removal of this um, stability for the area, that there can't be, we know at the moment that people are elected and that that's actually quite um, a disincentive for people to leave um, while they're still in, have a position that, because they know they'll be forcing an election if they leave before their term is up. Whereas this is enabling a minister to remove somebody if they're not doing what the minister likes, um, and for them just to put somebody else in. And so we have no guarantee of um, the people's control, but we also don't have guarantee of stability. Whereas one of the minister's um, arguments for this entire transitional model is to ensure continuity. Whereas actually for us, there's no guarantee of that continuity. This, I think, gives us less assurance of continuity than if we had um, elected members. And I do want to just again speak to that point of democracy. And while the government has in here provisions around that focus on skills and expertise, it has to be pointed out, there are council staff. <laughs> that can provide skill and expertise alongside the um, voice and the decision-making of elected, democratically elected people. And there is also, which we did not necessarily support, that there have been changes to the Local Government Act that enable the minister to appoint observers to council um, process it, to sit alongside councils, so that the government can have that assurance if they have concerns about the functioning of a council. So that could also provide that so-called continuity. There is no justification has been made that makes any sense to me to say why we need to have six out of 13 members appointed. There has, I have not heard any case to say why the people of Canterbury do not deserve their democracy back.